As I promised Josh, I am finally getting around to the video on how to solder your barrel jacks. So we'll get started on, the to, on that today. I'm going to be soldering the output jack from a LHZ preamp to a Switchcraft barrel jack commonly found in Spectres. Um, before I do that, I kind of want to talk about the different kinds of barrel jacks and what they're used for so we have a little bit more context. So there's two types of jacks, barrel jack, which looks like a long threaded sleeve with pins on the back. Uh, this is commonly found in Spectres. And then you have your standard jack, which is found in most other types of bases. So what you need for a preamp is a stereo jack. And you could tell because a stereo jack will always have three pins. So in this case, we'll have the sleeve, the ring, and then the tip connector. And the same thing on this one, you'll notice that there are three connectors here. So tip, ring, and sleeve. If you have a two conductor jack, this is your typical guitar jack, which is just a sleeve and a tip, throw it away. We don't, we don't need that. We don't use that here. The reason we have, the reason we use this is it acts like a switch for our power. So the battery negative power will come into the ring or ring connector here. And when you plug the jack in, it will pass power through to the sleeve and, and complete the circuit that will power the preamp. The most important thing you need to do before you wire these is to understand which connectors go to which. And it's not always obvious when you're looking at them, but on these type of jacks, the connector is almost always opposite of the pin that it's going to. So the tallest connector, the tallest spring on this one, if you plug a guitar jack into it, this will be the tip. So the connector for it will be opposite this one. So this will be the tip connector. And if you're not sure, just look at the side of it. You'll notice that there are several layers to this. So it's actually one piece of metal. It's bent down, it goes on the bottom layer, and you see where that pin comes up? It comes up in the bottom layer on the opposite side. So that is the tip. So the next one down should be the ring connector. And if again, same thing, we'll go down, we'll see that falls into this layer, which corresponds to that pin. And then of course the sleeve, which is the one you can see is connected right there. What we're soldering today is a barrel jack. Um, and these are switch craft jacks. So the sleeve, obviously the long one, it's, you can see it's connected to the outside. That is your sleeve. Your ring is the longer of two pins. So that's, let me see if you can see that and you can, that one right there. And then the tip is the shorter of those. On the LHZ preamp, these will connect to the CN2 connector, and you'll see that they marked R, S, and T for ring, sleeve, and tip. Um, so T goes to tip, S goes to sleeve, R goes to ring. Now, footnote, if you have the older green version of the preamp, there was a misprint, and these were transposed. So refer to your manual. It'll have the correct wiring for yours, but I'm using the current running blue ones, uh, so we'll use these examples. So I'm going to go ahead and use this wire, which kind of corresponds to the same colors that we have in the manual. And um, for this wiring example, we're going to use red for the tip. We're going to use black for the sleeve. And then we're going to use yellow uh, for the ring. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and strip our wires before we use it. I'm going to use my handy dandy Nipix because I love this thing. I don't need a whole lot, um, so I'm doing, what, maybe a quarter inch there. So before I do anything, I'll want to tin the tips slightly so I can work with them. It makes it a lot easier than having strands all over the place, so I'm just going to put it on my handy-dandy helping hands there. And I am using a digital soldering station, but you can pretty much use any soldering station. Um, mine is a digital one with a very fine point, obviously, because I'm working on tiny little boards, so I need tiny little points. Uh, your normal soldering iron that you'll find at a craft or hobby shop or Home Depot or Lowe's will work just fine. So to tin these, you're always gonna wanna clean the tip first so it's shiny. Put a little bit of solder on there and it'll melt. Just touch it to the wire. 
give it a little solder, and you'll see that the solder just kind of flows into it. It only takes a second. So those are now tinned. So which means with them tinned like that, I won't have these fuzzy wire strands sticking out. And the thing, the reason why I do that is I like to use a little hook technique so it holds on easier. So I'll take a pair of needle nose, grab the tip of the wire. I'm trying to get it, make sure I have it in the camera here and just grab a little bit of the tip of the wire, hold my finger on it and bend it over. Just roll it over on itself. So you end up with a little hook like that. I'm gonna do that to each one of these wires. Just grab a little bit of the tip, roll it over, just 180 like that, and you have a little tiny hook. There you go. And same thing with the yellow wire. Okay, so with my hooks in place, let's get our barrel jack out here so we can start working on it. I'm just gonna use the other holders for this one. So I'm gonna be taking the red wire and I'm gonna be putting it on the very short pin. So this is where the hook comes in handy because you can just pull it in here and hook it through there and it'll just hang out there like that. So using a pair of uh, helping hands, you can hold that on there like that. I like to kind of crimp or just push the lead down so it's not hanging out. So get as close as I can, but it doesn't need to be perfect. So let me move this a little bit so we can see a little better. There we go. So it doesn't take much, it only takes a second. Again, you're gonna clean the tip of the soldering iron so it is clean. I'm gonna wet it just a little bit with a little solder so it has a little solder on there. And you're gonna let the heat spread first. So I'm gonna to touch it on there, touch the solder on there, let it flow, and then remove it. That's it, we're connected. It doesn't take much. Next, we're going to do the ring connector, which will be yellow. Same thing. I'm going to take my little hook. I'm going to hook it through there. I'm going to crimp it down with the needle nose so it just kind of hangs tight. And then since I crimped it down like that, I don't even need to use the helping hands. Clean the tip. And sometimes it helps if you actually put the solder on top of what you're going to solder, like I'm gonna lay the, the solder on top of it, then I'm gonna bring my clean tip, lay it on top of the solder, and let it carry the heat. Then push the solder through, take the heat away. It's important to wait a few seconds. Don't move your wire until it sets. You'll notice it's shiny and then it'll kind of harden up. That'll tell you you have a good connection. And there you go, that one is set. And then the last one is the uh, sleeve connector. You can do this in multiple different ways. I normally cut these off. Um, you can hook it on the edge if it's easier. If you, some people will do it straight and solder it on the back. Um, there, there's a lot of different, you know, there's a little connector on the side, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so I am going to do this one here just because we're doing an example. I'm gonna do it so it hangs on the side here just so we can kind of see it. Again, I'm gonna kind of crimp my little wire. I sound like Bob Ross, don't I? Happy little trees, my happy little wire. Okay, so again, now you always have to think about heat when you're soldering. So this is a big piece of metal, so my tiny little tip, it's gonna take longer to heat this up because the heat is gonna be traveling down the rest of it. So you have to keep that in mind. The bigger the piece of metal you're soldering, the longer it's gonna take for the heat to set. Then I'm gonna place it on the metal with the solder. Let the heat spread and you'll see that it's heating up. Take the solder and soldering iron away. You'll see it'll change to that kind of hazy color, um, but it still should look shiny. And that's it. We now have our wires connected. Pretty easy peasy. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, all it takes is practice sometimes, so uh, good luck. And uh, keep soldering, you'll get it. It's uh, once, once you get it, it's a skill you'll never forget, and it just it's like riding a bike. So cheers.